Hello everyone, Susan Campfield here. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, relax. Welcome to Sue Stampfield land. We're gonna do some fun creating together tonight. Um, tonight's a redemption night for me. Um, we're gonna do a redo of a project that I shared with you in the last video. And I found a much easier way to make it, a much easier way to explain it. We're gonna use sneak peek product this time. So we're gonna use some new products. And um, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it. I also have some happy mail that I've received that after we make our project, I would love to share that with you. Oh, you'd like the Arlene likes my reindeer. <laughs> um, and like, seriously, um, I don't know if you can see that stack of cards. Oh my gosh, I have been so blessed. It's like a party every time I go to my mailbox. It's been super fun. So thank you so much for being here, everyone. I'm excited to share. Quick reminder, um, you can get the project sheet email by going to susanfield.com, clicking on subscribe. <laughs> Can't talk tonight. And uh, you'll get an email with project sheets if you prefer to have a printed document. Um, and, and then it's all good, right? All right, so I'm going to flip this and let's, uh, where the heck am I? Oh, here we go. Take that away. Are you ready to create? I'm ready to create. Let's do it, guys. All right. So um, I know I can't believe Christmas is like, oh, my gosh, Christmas is Monday. I was talking to my mom today and I'm bringing her up here and I said, yeah, I'll be down to, you know, in a, next week, a week from that, a week from this weekend, I'll be down to get you. And she said, wait, I thought you were coming this weekend. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're right, mom. <laughs> I am coming this weekend. Ah, it's just crazy, crazy. Um, so um, I've got all my things here. We have, um, I lose things a lot. So we play the found it game here at Sue Stampfield. Um, if you get a catalog with me, I always send you a fresh new coaster to use um, during the videos. Put your, put your beverage of choice on it. But I lose stuff all the time. I cover it up with other supplies. I can't find it. So when I find it again, we say found it and we take a sip of our beverage. So I've got my, I don't know if you can see it without spilling it here, the fa la 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 cup. <laughs> and um, I have ice water in mine, of course. So let me know what is in your cup. Carol's got green tea with honey and ginseng. Oh my gosh, that just makes me relax. Just, that sounds just fabulous. So in the last video, we made this adorable um, trucking along uh, lip balm holder. Opens up like this and the lip balm's inside. We didn't even get around to decorating it. <laughs> um, and a couple issues. I found a better way to make this. Um, let me see if I can grab the other one we made. We made two. Um, we made one with the, um, the Berry Christmas Designer Series paper. And so you can see that one of the problems is it, it's, it doesn't really close. So it, it's pretty flappy. So I wanted to come up with a fix for that. The other thing was, I think I confused a lot of you and myself <laughs> when we were making these cuts. And I found like, I'm like, oh my gosh, Susan, there's a way easier way to do this. So we're going to do that tonight, but we're going to use the Be Mine um, suite, which includes the Be My Valentine bundle, which is a stamp set and a punch. And shout out to my wonderful moderator, Jennifer Wall. She was hanging in the comments here and um, dropping uh, helpful um, information for us in the comments on YouTube. Uh, shout out to my friends over on Facebook who are watching with us. So, um, oh, you were thinking about a wine cooler, Virginia, but you went with uh, ice water. Good choice. Good choice. I was thinking about a glass of wine too. I'm like, no, better not. All right. So I'm going to grab, um, we're going to use, ah, I'm all over the place. <laughs> We're going to use this pretty paper. This is the Be Mine paper. And um, the red color in this is actually Sweet Sorbet. So that's the color we're going to use. Let me grab that. Just remembering a measurement I neglected to put in my document. That's all right. Let me grab Sweet Sorbet. So I have a piece of sweet sorbet cardstock here. I am going to cut this at, oh, come here you, moving my cup carefully over so I don't spill it. I'm going to cut this at five and three fourths inches. So one of the other issues that I ran into with the, um, with this holder is that the 
two pieces were exactly the same um, size. And when you, these are two separate pieces. And when you put two pieces that are exactly the same size together and glue them down and have scores, they no longer are the same size. So with this one, I had to trim off. There's some, some parts that kind of from the inside that sort of showed from the outside. Not a big deal, but it bugged me. <laughs> so I, um, I did change the measurements. So for the cover, we're going to start with the cover. The cover piece is five and three quarters by three and a half. Okay. Five and three quarters by three and a half. And the cover is scored at two and a half and three and a quarter. And three and a quarter right here. Okay. Hello, Tina. Thanks for tuning in. So I've got those two score lines and it's almost like a book. We we're talking in the last video. It kind of reminds me of the lifesaver books that I got as a kid from Santa. Um, so it looks a lot like a book. This time we're going to create a tab um, closure. You can also use ribbon to hold it closed. Both are good options, but that's the cover piece. So again, five and three, four. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this because this has so many score lines and things. It might get confusing. Oh gosh, where's a Sharpie, you guys? Mm. Where's a, sh oh, found one, I think. Let's see if it works. All right, so this is, I do have this printed out and I'll show it at the end, but just to keep things straight, five and three fourths by three and a half. If you just hit replay on this video and follow along, hopefully this will be helpful. And then you score it at two and a half and three and a quarter. If you're watching the live on YouTube, you're also getting these dimensions. All right, so that's our cover piece right here. Now we're gonna cut another piece. This one is gonna be a little bit smaller. So this one is gonna be five and a half inches long by three and a quarter. Three and a quarter, there we go. And the PDFs all go out by email. Um, Okay, and so we've got this five and a half by three and a quarter, and we're gonna score it at two and three eighths. Two and three eighths. And three and an eighth. <laughs> I don't ever have enough space, you guys. Oh my goodness, I keep running into that other paper. All right, and this is then the inside piece. Okay, this is the, the, this is the part we're gonna cut our slots in to hold the lip balm, okay? So I'm gonna just do a quick little post-it note, recap on the inside piece. It is five and a half by three and a quarter score at two and three eighths and three and one eighth, okay? All right, so that's our second piece right there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that cutting. I'm gonna put my trimmer aside for a moment and we're gonna look at the this piece. So make sure you're using the piece that's slightly smaller to do your cuts. And we're gonna fold on one of the score lines, just one. Grab my, it's okay if I, I you saw me already score, you know, kind of fold on both, that's okay. Right now, I just want to focus on this one. So I'm going to give that a really good crease with my bone folder. So when I hold it this way, I can't see the other score line. To do this step, I need to see the other score line. So I'm going to flip this over and now I can see that second score line. So we're going to cut this, um, this piece right here and we're going to do that with, <laughs> I'm stalling because, all right, where the heck are my scissors? Seriously. I just had them. Oh my gosh, Susan. What are we gonna do with me, you guys? Mm. It is just ridiculous. Oh, I put them where they belong. Well, 
Who would have thought I would do that? All right, I have my scissors now, found it. Take a sip, everyone. Um, all right, so we're gonna cut a notch about in the center. It does not have to be exact. I am not gonna measure. If that bothers you, you absolutely can measure. Um, this one, we did a lot of measuring and it got, I think, really confusing because of all the measuring. Um, if you're a precise person and you want to make some um, pencil lines and mark the center, we're going to cut a half inch wide. Um, uh, we're going to cut two slits a half inch apart. I'm going to totally eyeball it though. All right. So approximately in the center of my piece, I'm going to cut with my scissors and I'm cutting through both um, top and the bottom, the folded piece. And I'm going to go up to the score line and I'm just going to stop. Okay. So I've got this, right? And now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just eyeballing it about a half an inch and I'm cutting up to that score line and stopping. Okay. And that gives me this notch right here. Now, what's cool, what I really like about this particular um, lip balm holder is that it has these little pop out squares on the top and bottom that keep it from falling out. Otherwise, it would just slide right out. So, those are pretty important. They're about 3 8 inch wide. Um, well, they are 3 8 inch wide. Again, if you'd like to measure, you could use a pencil and measure this. What we're going to do is we're going to eyeball it again. This time, we want to cut from the fold halfway to the score line approximately okay so from the fold halfway to the score line and i'm eyeballing it i'm going to do oh you know it can be a quarter inch it can be three eighths inch it can be you know doesn't really matter it just its job is to hold the thing <laughs> all right so i've got that cut can you see that now we're going to do the same thing at the other end again i'm eyeballing it sliding it in about three eighths inch and i'm just taking a snip so it's about halfway to that next score line all right, so let me just hold this. I hope that shows. Now what we need to do is we need to add some um, some score lines because I'm going to be bending this. Paper is made from wood and just like wood, it has a grain. And usually you're cutting against the grain. You don't always know whether you are or not. So if you don't do a score, it'll fold really weird and kind of go wonky on you. So I'm going to grab, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can take your, um, your scoring tool and go in there. I'm going to actually just take my um, Stampin' Pierce mat. I'm going to take <laughs> the, um, when you purchase the take your pick tool, it comes with a stylus tool, both a, a large and small, or if you have the simply scoring tool, you can use that. I'm going to lay my ruler here um, to find the end of my little tiny slit pieces that I cut. And I'm just going to crease. Um, I'm putting it on the scoring, um, uh, the cushion here, because that, that allows the, um, the little tool to press down and um, score it really well because it's, just, it's not on something hard. So can you see those little scores? And then we're going to do the same thing over here. The first time I made this, I didn't bother scoring them. And... <laughs> It, it was all curvy and wonky and weird looking. It still did the job. So if you don't care about that, you know, you can skip this step. All right. So we've got it scored on each end. And then there's one more spot. I don't need to score this one because it already met up with the score. But I am going to score right here. So the other end, when I unfolded it, I could see the other end of my slit. And I just need to make a score between those two ends. So again, it doesn't go wonky on me. Again, I freehand cut this so they aren't exactly the same length. I'm going to go to where they are, um, where there's a slit on both, uh, both top and bottom, and just put a score there. Okay, so now I'm going to just reinforce those scores and just bend back and forth on that and bend back and forth on that and bend back and forth on the big one in the middle. That's the one that holds our lip balm, okay? So let's see what we have here. When we pop it open, we're gonna have, we can now, we can now fold on this other score line and we can pop this open. That's gonna hold our lip balm. We can pop this one open. That's gonna keep our lip balm from going out the top and we can pop that one open. It's gonna keep our lip balm from going out the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and just reinforce those scores a little bit here with my bone folder. 
and there we have, I can do it both ways even, reinforce this right here, get it all good and well creased. So that is the inside cover for our lip balm holder. Here's the outside cover. And once again, the, these were the measurements for that. And we just eyeball cut those center pieces, okay? And I do have these typed up. I will put them on screen at, um, right when we're done with this before we get to the, the happy mail cards, okay? So now we're gonna insert this inside our cover and we're gonna decorate it. And that's all that there is to it, okay? So we're gonna go ahead. Oh, before I do this, let's talk about the tab I mentioned. So you can see how this piece, um, it doesn't really want to stay closed. So one thing that you can do is you can take a ribbon. Now this is the part of the ribbon that comes in that suite. It's sweet sorbet, so I know it would match my project. I could adhere a ribbon inside before I put the two pieces together and I could tie it closed with a knot. Okay. Oh, happy birthday, Mary Sue. Um, the other option is you can make a, a tab closure. Okay. So this is a piece of cardstock. I sandwiched it between the cover and the inside piece. And then when I put the, um, the designer paper on here, I won't put any adhesive in the middle and we'll tuck the tab in there. So let me know in the comments if you want me to use ribbon or if you want me to do the tab. And I am going to give you the measurements for the tab as soon as I remember what they are because I just sort of made it up out of my head before I went live. So this one is, so let me know in the comments if we're gonna do ribbon or a tab. So each piece is, so it's a half inch. Oh, no, it's three quarters inch too, um, one and a half plus okay what's one and a half did two no oh, math hurts my head two and a quarter inches <laughs> um, boy it's pretty hotly contested here looks like ribbon is the oh oh but that person said do the tab 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 i'm seeing a few more votes for the ribbon i'm going to give you the dimensions on the tab though in case that is your preference so, and then we'll go forward with the ribbon. So the tab is a half inch wide by two and a quarter, two and a quarter. And it is scored at a half inch. No, it's not, Sue, so I lied. It's scored at three quarters of an inch. And a half inch. I'm gonna have to flip this over. Okay. So three quarters and a half. And then this is gonna be the part that will go where the book part is. This one's the bottom, that one's the top, or vice versa. And you're just gonna tuck that in between. We're gonna use ribbon on this one because that was what most people voted for, and that probably is a little bit easier depending on your preference. I'm gonna give myself a lot of ribbon, probably way more than I need. Let's, well, let's not get too crazy, Susan, come on. All right, we'll go right here. All right, so how long will be, in case you're wondering, um, I don't even know if this is gonna be the right length or not, but let's see how long it is. It is 12. Um, not quite 18, it's uh, 16 inches. All right, so now we're gonna take some tear and tape. You do not wanna put the tear and tape on this piece because you're gonna have um, portions that are open. And if there's exposed tear and tape there, you're gonna run into problems, right? So we're gonna put the tear and tape on the insert piece that has our cuts in it. So I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape here. A piece of tear and tape here. And then two little pieces here. Now when I did the tab, that's all I did. But because I'm doing the ribbon, I'm gonna add another piece right here. 
just to help my ribbon stay where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. Does anyone see my take your pick tool? Oh, wait, found it. Got it. Take a sip, everyone. I put it away. Who even am I tonight putting things away? This is not how I typically, not typically how I roll, sadly. I'd be better off if I did, but all right. Let's pull these guys off. All right, got one more. We're almost there. It is a good idea before you put your liner in to just make sure you've got these guys really well creased. Um, they might flatten out in this process, but if they're well creased, we can pop them back right back up with the help of the bone folders or the take your pick tool or whatever bone folder, maybe either one. Oh, Susan forgot the ribbon. Were you guys yelling at me going, Susan, put the ribbon in. All right, so I'm just going to lay the ribbon in place. This part is not going to stick down the ribbon, but I needed it right there. All right. So I'm just going to press on the center ones, and now I'll do the one on this side and the one over on this side. There we go. And then those pop right back up. Okay. We can put our, um, our lip balm right in there. I've got Burt's Bees lip balm here because we're going to decorate this with a bee and so it seemed appropriate, right? <laughs> so we're just going to pop that right in there and ooh, you know what? I got my my um, uh, I got these a little too wide. I'm having trouble with having it fit. Alright, let me see if I can fix that. Top secret, top secret stuff here. I'm going to clip this. Probably should have tested that before I put it together. So when I um, when I did my sample one, I did it um, about a quarter inch. This one I did like an eighth of an inch, and it's too wide. So we're just going to cut out a chunk. <laughs> so yeah, let's do those uh, do those in a, uh, eight, a quarter inch instead of a three eighths inch. Yep, I think that will will fit. I gotta get a little bit more of this paper out. It's, it does a really good job of holding that in. Okay, now I'm having a hot flash <laughs> because I messed up. Oh my goodness! I'm sure you guys have boo boos too, right? It's kind of part of crafting. You mess it up and then you figure out how to fix it. All right, I have now chopped out a chunk. And like, I mean, it's interior, like nobody is going to notice that. Now it fits perfect. So I've got my bottom one was three eighths about and my top one's quarter inch. Okay, maybe I should have measured those. <laughs> hey, it's just us. Okay. All right. So there we go. That's how that's going to close. We'll tie that with a ribbon. I'm going to take this out for right now because we're going to decorate it, right? So this is where I would love your help. This paper is so cute. So if you were making this project and you wanted to um, be fast <laughs> and go with the easy, easy button, you could just put some of this cute paper on it that's covered in bees. And then maybe a sentiment here like, um, be mine or you make my heart buzz or whatever so that's one option we're actually going to do a punched out bee on ours so we're either going to use and i would love your feedback on this we're either going to use this one with the cute little flowers they're kind of like daisies they have a yellow center not exactly like daisies posies maybe or are we going to use this one that has the little bee trails so it's a little dash line that has the the swirlies in it okay so um yeah they would be really fun for your uh your uh, paleo crew if you did dinosaurs on it that's a fun idea janine um so let me know in the comments if we're using bee trails or the flowers and i'm going to set those aside and then i'm going to make a bee while you guys are voting so i'm going to grab my stamp set here get my bee body <laughs> And my B stripes. And the B wings. All the things. 
flowers, bee trails, flowers, bee trails, flowers, flowers, flowers. Oh, flowers are in the lead. I don't think there's a wrong answer, right? Either one's going to be adorable. All right, do I need anything else? Oh, yeah, a face. All right, which face are we using? Let me know in the comments. I don't want to use the crabby face because I don't like to be stung by bees. Our bee is friendly. <laughs> so um, the sleepy bee, the wide open bee, um, or the winking bee. So wink, wide, or sleepy. Let me know in the comments. And while you're voting on that, I'm going to get a piece of cardstock and make a B. So I'm going to take, uh, let's go Daffodil Delight. It's always a good choice. I see a lot of winks. <laughs> let's see, a lot of winks. All right. Uh, what is the name? Virginia has a question. What is the name of the paper that matches the new colors? I think I might have missed something there. Um, I'll let Jennifer, if Jennifer knows the answer, I'll let her answer that. If not, um, let me know if I can be of assistance. All right, so we're going to go in here and we'll ink up the bee body. We're using sweet sorbet paper. I don't know if that helps at all. All right, we got our bee body in place there and... Winky. All right. We've decided on winking flowers. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to grab the tuxedo black ink. You know, Susan, it's easier to close the pad if you do the right end. <laughs> I was trying to do the other end, which doesn't work because there's no place to grab onto. All right. Let's grab our tuxedo black here. And this is a pretty solid stamp, so I'm actually going to, because the, the Tuxedo Black is a felt pad, I'm going to rub it first, and then I'm going to firmly press and tap. I would never do this with the foam pad because I'd end up with ink everywhere. <laughs> but with the felt pad, you need a, a little more um, convincing, I guess. Is that the word I want? I'm, I'm just, uh, oh, I need my tail to be lined up right with the bee bottom. All right, right there. Okay, so there we've got our bee body and we're doing a winking face. That'll be adorable. Let's see. There's a little wink right there. Let's grab a block and this one I'm gonna tap like I'm knocking at a door and we'll do that right there. Try a little wink, wink. And then I need a pair of wings. Before I stamp the wings, I'm actually going to take my bee punch. Hmm. Hmm. I don't have it out. Well, that's a problem. Found it up on my punch wall here, with where, right where it's supposed to be. So because this is a builder punch, um, it's going to be too hard for me to guess where that is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and punch out the bee body first. Right there. Got some bonus pieces and now I'm going to stamp my wings and I'm just going to do my wings um, on white in the black here. You could also do the wings with vellum if you prefer. Um, we might want to add some Wink of Stella. We can decide about that. Am I going to be able to get in here? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go like that. Let's see if I can get in there. So one of the bonuses on this punch is that the wings um, also make a heart. So this gives you a heart punch, a big and a small heart. It also punches out the wings. So I love a punch that is dual purpose like this. Now this is a sneak peek product. These products will be in the mini catalog. They'll be available to purchase on January 4th. Just will still give you plenty of time to get your Valentine stuff made. And then we're going to put our little wings on our bee. I like to have my wings um, back a little bit. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Okay, so we've got that. Um, probably going to do a greeting. Where's our thing here? All right, so we went with flowers, although it was pretty close. So the designer paper, we're going to cut it two and a quarter by three and a quarter. I'm going to put my wings on first before I lose them because you all know. <laughs> You guys know that is how we roll around here. All right, so I've got my glue dots. And let's go ahead and stick that on. 
And I'm so excited to show you all this happy mail I got. And there's some fun fold cards in here and some fun card layouts that we might have to try in a future video. So, all right, there we've got our little buzz buzz. And now we're going to cut this. So what did I say it was? Two and a quarter by three and a quarter. So let's grab a paper trimmer. And we're going to cut this two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Come here, little bee. How are you guys doing about the holidays? Are you all ready? Because I am not even close. I am totally focused on Crafternoon, which is going to be this Thursday at 7.30 Central. It's Crafternoon in the evening this time because the holidays have messed everything up. So um, I am uh, pretending Christmas is not going to be on Monday. I'm going to wake up on Friday and go, oh my gosh, I need to get ready for Christmas. <laughs> All right, so there we've got our cute little flower paper, adorable. And let's see, I'm just, uh, does it matter what side? I'll put it on, um, yeah, I'll put it on this side. So the reason I'm debating which side, you can put it on either side, um, but this way I can put a piece of designer paper here too and put a greeting here. It's easier, I think, to put the greeting here because this cuts into your piece and it's harder to do an even piece. You like my little hatchet job there on our little. <laughs> okay. Um, so I decided to put it on this, this side. Okay. Let's get some. Do I need this right now? I probably will, but I'll set it aside right now. Um, I need some adhesive right here. Found it. Take a sip, everyone. It's a good thing you're not drinking wine. <laughs> So we're sipping a lot here. Sipping a lot. All right. Let's put this right here. There we go. Not ready. Slowly getting ready. Virginia is all ready. She's like, it would drive her nuts to not <laughs> just be ignoring Christmas right now. I have purchased a few things. I'm just nowhere near done. All right. So there's our little bee. Now I'm, I'm, we could leave it like that and just stick the bee on the front and put our greeting inside. That would be super cute. We might do something different, but I'm also going to put a piece of designer paper on the inside and we're going to use the flip side of the bee trail paper, which is these adorable little honey pots. They're just so cute. Um, so what size would that be? Mm. Well, can I do the same size. Does anyone see my ruler? I had it right here. We were using it. Oh my gosh. Oh, found it. It was under the Be My Valentine stamp set. Of course. Of course it was. Three and a quarter by two and a quarter. Yeah, I'm just going to cut it three and a quarter by two and a quarter. Hey, if it doesn't fit, I can cut it down, right? I can't make it bigger. <laughs> All right. Three and a quarter by two and a quarter. And this one is directional, so I'm just taking a minute to, I'm going to do this, um, we're going landscape on this. I'm going to cut this landscape. Don't want sideways honey pots, right? Two and a quarter. By three and a quarter. And the honey pots don't really say anything on them. It's kind of like a written script, but it's just kind of gobbledygook. It doesn't necessarily say anything because I was trying to read it. <laughs> So, but they're very clearly, obviously, honey, right? All right, so that is going to go on, let's see, this is our, our bee's going to go this way. So I want to, again, want to double check to make sure it's right side up. And that's going to go right on the inside. You could also use one of the ones with all the little bees. That would be super cute, too. This paper is adorable, like, um... This would, one would have been cute with the little bee trails and the little baby bees. I, it's all super cute. All right, so we're going to put this right here. Cute! <laughs> and, all right, so we got our honey there. And then we've got our bee. 
and I'm still debating about that. So on the inside, we're going to put a sentiment here. Should we do you're as sweet as honey or should we do uh, be mine? You'll always be the one for me. You make my heart buzz. What do you think? Which one should we use? There's lots of cute sayings there. I'm going to, I'm going to experiment with something while you're voting. Let's see, where is it? I ah, found it. Let's see. It's a short ruler. Uh, it's a six inch ruler, uh, Janine. Yep, it's my favorite because it's just the perfect size for card making. Um, I have longer rulers when I need them, but that one's just a nice little size. All right, so... Um, I see a couple sweet as honey and a couple you make my heart buzz. Buzz, honey. It's pretty hotly contested. Does the bee balm taste like honey? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's with vitamin E and peppermint, so not so much. <laughs> but if it did, that would be perfect, right? All right, I am just playing here to see if we want to um, do a B mine on the front and I'll add a little heart. Um, that might be cute. Let's see what that looks like. So I made a card with this set. Here's the card that I made. My team helped me make this card, actually. This is one of my favorite layouts. I've got several videos where we do this layout where you use a three inch uh, strip of designer series paper. And um, this card, you can see both sides of the paper. So on this one, we did um, a, a label to add a greeting. And so that was what I was playing with for this card to see how that looks. So seeing a few more, you make my heart buzz. <laughs> and I, it's pretty hotly contested between the honey and the heart buzzing. Um, let's see, be mine is right here. So we're not committed to this on the front. We're just seeing if we like it or not. That is totally crooked, Susan. Mm. Get that nicely loaded here. That looks pretty good. Take my little modern oval, stamp it right there. And then this suite comes with these fun little epoxy um, adhesive back hearts and flowers. And I love the little hearts. They're super cute. You've got, you've got bigger ones and smaller ones. I'm going to use the bigger one. You also have them on pink, blue, yellow, all the things, and little flowers as well. Maybe a flower would match our flower paper better, but I like the Be Mine because it's a little more... Uh, if I use this as a Valentine gifty, it's a little more Valentine-y. Now, is that going to be too big for the front of my project? It's a little big. Hang on. Let's see if we can adjust our wings a tad. I'm going to squish them down and put them back a little farther. And now you could also put Wink of Stella on the wings. That would be super cute. Mm. Nah, I don't, I don't know if I care for that. All right, I'm just going to go with the B on the front. <laughs> okay, crooked is your trademark. Picasso style, there you go. The important thing is that you're making and sending handmade cards, right? Showing that you care. That is, that is the critical part, right? Get them in the mail. And sometimes it's the hard part, right? All right, so I've got three dimensionals on there. I don't know, I still feel like I could get this bee on here, but the wings are giving me problems. Maybe I should have done the bee at the, oh, maybe if I had done it that way, that might've worked better. Hang on, hold the phone, let's try it. Let's see if this heart wants to come off. It does, thank you. And I'm gonna flip this over and try the bee mine at the bottom. and see what we think. Once again, I have no space. <laughs> oh, I 
is so good at that, right? Use up every bit of space possible to me. All right, let's try that. Oh, that's a little better, isn't it? That's cute. All right, Be Mine does get make the cut here. We're going to add a little, we're going to add a little heart on there. You're right, you could totally fussy cut it out. I'm super lazy, so <laughs> I can avoid fussy cutting. I usually do, but that's just me. More power to you if you I'm peeling this off because I decided to move them over just a bit because, you know, I like to make myself crazy, I guess. I don't know. And I'm going to tilt them a little bit because it's cuter tilted. All right, there we go. And then let's bring that heart back. Didn't go too far away, but I have totally lost my take your pick tool. Oh, found it. Okay. It rolled, rolled right off the edge, but it didn't go too far. Little heart there. I love the shininess of these little epoxy hearts. And they're very flat and low profile, so they're not going to cause any extra lumpiness in the mailing. Maybe tilt it a little bit. Let's see. Make it crooked too, right? And then we'll just cover up our our initial try. <laughs> we didn't we didn't fit, right? It didn't work out. All right, so we got our B mine right here. Now we've got that. And then what did you all decide for the inside? I think you make my heart buzz was the the winner right here. You make my heart buzz. That's this one, I believe. Grab a block here. And I am super lazy. That's why I love punches. <laughs> so I could cut my cardstock to be the right size. But what if this punch would work? I don't know. It might be too tall. Let's find out. Let's find out. Did that fit? Because that would make it easy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Totally fits. <laughs> Yes, I could have cut a piece of cardstock. I know. But we got a bunch of cards to look at, guys. All right, you make my heart buzz. You put it up a little higher if you wanted to sign it. But that can go right there. And a little adhesive. Now you can do this for Christmas. You can do it for Valentine's Day. You could do it as a thank you, teacher thank you. Um, thanking a friend who's helping you out. All the things, right? Let's put our our uh, bee balm in here it's not really bee balm that's a that's a flower right all right put our lip balm in there and then you can see this one kind of flattened out just take your take your pick tool and pop it up so that it can do its job you cannot even tell that i took out a chunk until you remove the the lip balm right <laughs> and then we're just going to take this and tie it so let me grab the, now you can do a bow on this. If you don't like bows, that's okay. You can just do a knot. If I cut my ribbon too short, I'll be doing a knot. <laughs> I think that 16 inches is going to be just barely, I should have gone maybe 18, but just enough for me to squeeze out a bow. And it's twisted and that's okay. I'll fix it later. You get the idea. All right, there we go. There is our little project. So cute. I know, right? So cute. And then, of course, you can do it with, for Christmas with the truck. Or this truck has birthday presents in it. I mean, it doesn't have to be for Christmas, right? There's lots of things to put in the truck with the truck set. And then you can just take designer paper and make one um, like that. And again, you also have that option of doing the tab and then putting your designer paper on the front and just uh, not putting an adhesive in this section so you can slide your tab in to hold it closed. So I hope that that is a little bit easier to follow. Let's grab our dimensions here. All right. So here are our, okay, everybody move out of the way. We got picture, picture time. <laughs> and let me bring the camera down a little bit lower so it's bigger. How about that? Now you can take a screenshot of those um, dimensions. And in the other video, I will put in a link to this video because I think it's just a little bit easier to make it this way. And then here is, I'm going to add, Jennifer is putting the um, tab closure size right there. So I'm going to slide this up. So now your screenshot will include the tab closure if you want to go that route. Let's see, here's the sample of the tab. 
put it in there in case you want that photo. All right. Are you guys ready to see some fun cards? Gorgeous cards. Oh, so fun. All right. Let's put this aside and clear the deck. Oh gosh. I'm dropping stuff. Uh oh. What was that? <laughs> okay. It was, I thought it was a stamp. I'm like, if it's a stamp, I need to recover it. Or good golly, who knows what? It'll be gone forever. Okay. Let's, um, let's, let's look at some cards. You ready? You know what? I need an empty tub to put them in. Because there is a lot of them. All right, let's do this fast. All right, this first one is from uh, my team member, Barb. Beautiful. Oh, let's take down Jennifer's comment. There we go. Gorgeous card from Barb. Just kind of a mix of uh, current product. And then this uh, music paper is a retired product. Totally great way to use your um, all your papers, all your things for the holidays. So beautiful card from Barb. This one is a fun one. This one is from uh, my team member. Barb is a team member. This is also from a team member. This is from June. Um, June, this is her group of ladies that she does um, has classes in her senior center with. And they take um, old cards, uh, Christmas cards that people donate, cut them apart to make cards. I donate a lot of scraps for this cause because they sell the cards um, and the money all goes to the local schools. And I think it's just a great cause. So I, I give her a lot of scraps. This was a, um, a scrap from a, we'd cut a star for a project, a whole bunch of them. And so I love how she used the, the leftover star piece to make the card. So just very, very clever. And then let's go on here. This one is from another team members. My team members are so good to me. Oh my gosh, they spoil me rotten. This is from Carol Rosengren. Absolutely stunning card from Carol. It's vanilla. This next one is from another team member, also absolutely stunning. This is from Carol Baumgartner. Absolutely gorgeous. That poinsettia there. Beautiful cards. Oh, you you cut ornaments out of old um, old uh, store bought cards. Great idea. This next one is from team member Kelly Burkhart really fun kind of non-traditional colors, just really bright and happy card. This next one is a really fun one. This one is from uh, one of our viewers. This one is from Leslie Moore. And it's the swing and sway card. So this little tree on here swings back and forth. <laughs> so cute and opens up like that. So absolutely love it, Leslie. Thank you so much. Fantastic. This next one is from another viewer. Uh, this one is from Linda Vanderspool. Love the bright um, shaded spruce colors on this with the real red. It really pops. Adorable little Santa hat there. Super cute from Linda. Thank you so much. You guys spoil me too. Oh my goodness. Um, this one is from another viewer. This one is from um, Carol Smith. And super cute card, scenery card there. I love this paper. This one's still available and it is a fundraiser, great cause. Um, and not just for Christmas necessarily. And this one is from another viewer. This is from Joan Ballinger. And Joan did a really fun non-traditional color card. This is a fun fold, so it opens up like this. And it says, wishing you a, and then there's a hidden message, hidden message right there. Merry Christmas. Super cute. Jennifer is sharing that swing and sway uh, video um, in the comments. You can also find that on my blog. Uh, we did a fall leaf one and a bunch of other ones. So it'll be fun. That's a craft afternoon. All right. Next up is this one is from Bev. Uh, let's see. I don't, not sure if I can, I know how to pronounce your last name, Bev. Rachel, I want to say. I might be butchering that, but beautiful card here. Absolutely gorgeous with some designer paper we had last year that was so pretty. Love the deer on there. So, and she even has some DSP on the inside. So kind of you, 
folks sending me these cards and telling me how much you enjoy the videos. It just makes, just warms my heart. Um, this one is from, just shows you the power of a handmade card, right? Um, this is from Angie uh, Defremery. Just th again, thanking me for the videos. Um, she's been stamping, she says, just for a year, been making cards for a year and has learned a lot. Oh my goodness, look at that. She is learning a lot. <laughs> she's making some gorgeous cards. Well done, Angie. Uh, this next one is adorable. This is from Betty Hayden. So cute. Got a little, heard you've been naughty here. So here's the scoop. All you'll get is snowman poop. <laughs> Super cute. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> okay, this next one is from, this is, oh, this is from a team member, Michelle Carlson, I think. Yep, Michelle Carlson. Gorgeous with that winter paper. So, so pretty. And she used the snowflake punch. Absolutely stunning card from Michelle. And she also um, protected her card with this piece, this little cardstock piece that um, has a little note in there telling you that it's um, protecting the card. Um, Cause if you do gems in a card. All right, this one's from another team member. This one's from Vicki Spicer. So cute, Vicki. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. I love that truck. It's, and she knows I have a Christmas tree farm or my family has a Christmas tree farm. So um, awesome. And I really like how she did the brown ribbon behind the plaid ribbon there to just kind of double layer it. That's really a nice technique. We'll have to use that sometime when our ribbon isn't quite wide enough um, to double, double, make it a little bit wider by layering the ribbon and just gives it a different look too. So beautiful card from Vicki. This next one is from, oh, a team member, Sarah Anderson. This is a fun fold card, opens up like that. Super cute card from Sarah. Love it. Love it, love it. Whoops, I did it wrong. Merry Christmas goes on top. <laughs> so you flip this one to see that scene and then you see another scene there. This would be a fun one for us to, to um, make, wouldn't it? And here is another crafter noon. This one is from Brandy. Brandy, I'm gonna butcher your name. Brandy is a team member. Chitrasic. And I, I know I'm saying that wrong. You've told me how to how to pronounce it before and I still butchering it. She made the cascading pleats card. Um, super cute with the uh, St. Nicholas paper. Adorable. Love it. And I love that she used a crumb cake base. So very, very nice. What type of tree does your family prefer? What type of Christmas tree? Um, on the farm, we tend to grow white pine and scotch pine the most. Um, I have a scotch pine this year. I actually prefer white pine because um, they're really soft, um, but scotch pine hold the ornaments a little better, so it depends. This gorgeous card is from team member um, Terry Snyder. Absolutely stunning with that da dazzling paper there. Oh, just beautiful. And this is the, um, I think it's called, is it called Be Merry, Jennifer? No, So Very Merry is the name of that one with the angel, and she embossed it in gold. Um, just really, really, really pretty. <laughs> really, really pretty. Thank you, Terry. I love it. And then we have another cascading pleats. This is from Virginia Phillips, who I think is watching right now. Virginia did the cascading pleats with this really pretty, sparkly, uh, uh, hologrammy kind of paper. And then she's got berries on the holly. And look at all the detail inside here. Super sparkly and fun. Thank you so much, Virginia. Do I do colored lights or just white? I like just white lights. <laughs> I'm a real snob about that. I know people have pretty strong opinions. I like white lights, um, but I like red ornaments, red and white ornaments. Usually we have a variety too. This is from team member Sandy Stellenberg. Oh my goodness. She used the, the Stampin' Up! hologram paper on the star. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is just stunning. Really, really stunning. So this is from Sandy. You guys are all so talented. Oh my goodness. All right, this one is another fun fold card. This one's from my team member, Anita Dixon. So she used that adorable walk in the forest paper, the one that's the fundraiser. She's got a little hat and scarf on her bear. Plus you cut those out. Um, and then this one, look at this. So the in, the the this is where you write the message. And this is like it, a stand that holds your card up for display. How clever is that? 
All right, I think we might need to try this. What do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think? I think we might need to try that. So, well, my tree is not very pretty right now because um, true disclosure, Jennifer can wrap me out on this because she was here um, yesterday. Um, there's no ornaments on the tree yet. There's lights on it, but we haven't quite gotten to the ornaments yet. But again, after Crafty Down, we can get to that. This beautiful card is from Janice Walsh. And it is the Eclipse um, Technique. So she used the big letters, a little bit of cardstock behind. A super beautiful card. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Um, and this is Janice Walsh, who is Jennifer's mom. And she is so sweet. She always sends me a birthday card and Christmas card. And I can't believe she remembers me. It's just so sweet. Uh, this one is from team member Judy Beagler. This is another fun one. Judy used the Berry Christmas Paper. And check this card out here. Let me, let me make sure I'm getting it right. So, whoops. So it opens up like this and it's a pop-up card. Look at that. Super fun. So you can stand to display and then the bear and the bear with the tree stand up. Absolutely cool. So, um, yay, Janice. <laughs> this is yay to um, Judy Beagler. So we might have to try a pop-up card too, guys. Haven't done one in quite a while. So, all right, this next one is from Marcine Ingram. We, we just have another 12 or so to go <laughs> until tomorrow's mail, right? These are uh, pre-printed cards that are in the catalog if you want to save a uh, step and speed up your Christmas card making. They're cut, they're scored, they come with matching envelopes. They're all ready. Um, she used that gorgeous ribbon here and just made a beautiful card. Um, so beautiful card from Marcine. She's so talented. She even added a, a star on the inside, another team member. And this one is from a uh, viewer, <laughs> a longtime customer, Dee Clawitter. Gorgeous card from Dee. Look at that. She did the bedazzled paper back here. And then um, this paper that has sold out, which I'm blanking out on the name. Um, and she has the gold and... Um, golden navy ribbon that ribbon is carrying over by the way uh, beautiful ribbon and she sent me a gift with it look at the adorable gift this cute little uh mini milk can um that'll make a great vase um that says christmas trees on it farm fresh so i even have a bunch of christmas of uh, pine boughs that i brought back from the farm so i can put water in that and have a uh, a pine uh, bouquet in here. So beautiful card from Dee and thank you so much for the gift. That was so thoughtful of you. Um, next up we have Sharon Land sent this adorable card. This one is a fun fold. We might have to do this one too. This one opens up like here. You see how that slides up? And then she has a, inside here a little message in a pocket. Very, very fun card. I've seen these before with gift card holders in them too, these um, kind of slider pieces uh, inside the cards. So we might have to figure that one out. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, we've got, got some fun ones here to try. This next one is from Patty Breeze down in Texas. Gorgeous card here with the deer and uh, just super colorful. I love the color she's got going here. Very non-traditional, but really, really fun. And her card base is actually um, Smoky Slate. So really, really beautiful card. So thank you so much, Patty. Um, she is actually going to be going to um, uh, the uh, Stampin' Up! convention, and I'm so excited to meet her. And another one of my Texas team members, Patty Edelman made this fun card this is that same fold that i was showing, the same layout that i was showing you here with the b cards so she did the paper where you see both sides of it super pretty card from patty edelman thank you so much patty this next one is we're getting down to it this one is from kathy noel kathy noel is um local here has been a long time customer and made a gorgeous gorgeous card here in very shiny gold so absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And all right, Jennifer, make a note that we need to make this card that had the slidey, slider pocket, let's call it. <laughs> this next card is from another of my fabulous uh, Stampfield Stars family members, team members. This is from Nancy Booth. Super cute scenery card there. Love it, Nancy. 
know Nancy for years because she um, owns Whippets as well. This one's from another team member, Trisha Josephs. Super cute card. Tidings of joy. Glad tidings of joy. And then inside, I like how she, um, this is a punched out label, but she used the blending brushes to make kind of a, um, a softly shaded area to put the, the punched uh, piece on so that it kind of pops out instead of a layer. Super fun. Um, I like how she did that fun technique there. This next card is from one of my team members up in Alaska, Vicki Hoffner. Beautiful card here with the, oh, I'm blanking out on this set. I just used the dies of this set for this month's Crafter Noon, actually. Um, but beautiful card from Vicki with just the sweetest message inside. And then we're almost done. Just a couple more left. This is from another team member, Pauline Burglar. Beautiful card here. I believe that, oh, this is Night of Navy. She's got a little bench in here. Oh, so cute with the tree. Oh my goodness, so detailed. Absolutely love it. And then this one is from another team member, Janice. Love it, Janice. So sweet. It's a square card. And she's thanking me for the little team Christmas gift that I sent. And last one, last one is from Lorraine Baker. Super fun card here. So this I think this designer paper covers the whole front and then these strips, little scrap strips of cardstock make that um, kind of ret retiform shape. Super fun card. I love this. Really beautiful, Lorraine. Absolutely love it. Oh, we did it, you guys. Whew. That was a lot. That was a lot of cards. I'm going to flip the camera here. Whoops, hit the right button, Susan. Yay! <laughs> Well, we did it. We made a cute project. We saw a lot of beautiful cards and we got inspired. I hope you were inspired to make and send more handmade cards. This is that much more kindness that we can spread throughout the world. Thank you all for all your efforts with the card making. I really hope you're able to join me on Thursday at 7.30 Central Time. That's just in two days. So I can share a brand new craft room fun fold with you. I'm super excited about this one. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's easy, but don't tell because it looks like it's hard, but it's, it's super easy. So I'm excited to share it and uh, hope you can tune in on Thursday or of course you can always watch the replay. And then a Saturday night, 7.30 Central, we'll have another one of our regular videos and then it's Christmas. So um, I hope to see you. If not, have a fabulous holiday. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video. Have a great night, everyone. Bye-bye.